good morning everybody or maybe good afternoon now yeah actually this is about introduction to heat transfer we are uh, planning to teach this heat transfer course uh, myself prabhu and this is professor arun kumar sridharan so what i am going to present now maybe in next 5 to 10 minutes is that uh, what is that we are going to teach and how we are going to teach this course and so you will come to know what is that you can expect through this course. So, I have just put in this transparency heat transfer and these are the course instructors. So, basically uh, we have not written any objective as such as Professor Sukatme very concisely put it on the first day of our introduction to what is that thermodynamics course. He very rightly said that we would like to teach this basic course although heat transfer is not so basic as basic as fluid mechanics and thermodynamics. Uh, to teach this basics and fundamentals of heat transfer to as many teachers as possible all over the country. That is the basic objective of this course. Now, coming to course contents, what we intend to teach essentially as we all know that uh, heat transfer is comprising of three modes of heat transfer that is conduction, convection and radiation and in fact, we are going to go in the same order and uh, we are we may not be able to cover boiling and condensation, which comes under two phase flow. So, now this is course contents that is we will start off with introduction to heat transfer and in introduction we will definitely cover one dimensional conduction, heat diffusion equation and of course, the properties the like thermophysical properties like thermal conductivity, thermal diffusivity and the appropriate boundary conditions and the initial conditions required. And in one dimensional conduction, we would be covering plane wall, composite wall, uh, cylinders and spheres. Essentially here, we will be introducing uh, the analogy approach that is what is the similarity between the heat transfer and the electrical resistance concept. And of course, we will further it with critical radius of insulation and of course, we will be summarizing everything with the 1 D approach. But when I say 1 D here, it is steady state that is things are not changing with time and there is no heat generation as well. So, it is the simplest possible case one can think of. So, as usual as we always study from simple to complex, we start start with simple case that is one dimensional conduction. And after that one more complexity we will introduce that is the energy generation and of course, with various boundary conditions we can solve this problem. And very important topic that is the fins we will be covering in great detail the fins the how to how to design a fin for a given application we would be covering that followed by transient conduction. When I say transient conduction the complexity what we have added here is that that is temperatures are going to change with time no longer they are going to be steady state temperatures are going to change with time and of course, here we will be covering one dimensional before one dimensional we will be covering what is called as lumped capacitance that is temperatures are uniform all over that is they are not changing with space, but they are only changing with time and we will be covering both with space and time, but in space we will be covering only one dimensional through Heisler's charts and of course, one important concept that is semi infinite medium also would be covered. This is about overall conduction. Of course, we are not going to cover two dimensional conduction and numerical methods of solving uh, conduction problem. This will be covered perhaps in CFD course what professor Puranik and professor Atul Sharma are going to teach. And of course, convection is a very wide uh, uh, mode of heat transfer, but we will be covering essentially here basic mechanisms before going to the mechanisms of the convection. Here for convection one thing I would like to add is that the fluid mechanics is very important. Fluid mechanics is indispensable. Without fluid mechanics we cannot understand convection. So, we will be covering or brushing up the fundamentals of fluid flows like velocity boundary layer, laminar and turbulent flow and of course, momentum transfer which we would have studied in fluid mechanics. And after all the basics are taught, we would be deriving all the equations that is continuity equation that is the conservation of mass, conservation of momentum that is the Navier Stokes equations and differential energy equation. Perhaps continuity equations and the Navier Stokes equations would have been covered in fluid mechanics. However, 
we are not going to assume that you know that we will be teaching as if you do not know that. So, that is that is the how the uh, approach would be uh, when we are covering the differential form of equations and of course, the energy equation is the new thing in the heat transfer that we would be covering and followed by the external flows that is the boundary layer equations for flat plate both momentum and energy and we would be introducing the similarity concept that is how do we come across the non-dimensional numbers that is the Reynolds number and the Prandtl number and this, this approach was indeed given by professor Nusselt himself uh, for which he got, got his professorship. So, that is what we will be introducing uh, during non-dimensionalized normalized dimensionless equations and similarity approach and of course, the analogies of heat transfer and followed by the convective heat transfer in external flows and of course, later on we will be covering internal forced convection where we will be introducing the concept of average and the bulk, uh, bulk mean temperature followed by laminar and turbulent. Of course, closed form solutions are possible or you can derive with pen and paper only for a laminar flow, it is not possible for turbulent flow. Turbulent flow it would be essentially correlation based approach. These correlations have been generated through experiments and we will be touching upon natural convection uh, in terms of writing the governing equations and getting the non-dimensional number that is the Grashof number through these differential equations. That is about convection. Of course, canvas can be bigger in convection by including two phase flow also, but we do not intend to extend the canvas for that. And of course, heat exchanges is a very integral part of convection. So, we would be covering heat exchanges with the fundamentals of the overall heat transfer coefficient, fouling factor. And there are two approaches which we would be covering here that is the LMTD approach and the epsilon NTU approach both for parallel and counter flow. This LMTD approach and the epsilon NTU approach we can derive both for parallel and counter flow, but subsequent ones for multi pass and cross flow we would be teaching it through correction factor correction factor approach with, with the help of charts. So, that is about heat exchangers and finally, the thermal radiation here we are going to teach only the uh, what do I say is that we are not going to teach the participating medium, we are going to teach only for non participating medium that is perfect vacuum. So, we will be introducing all laws that is Stefan Boltzmann law, Planck's law, Wien's displacement law and basic definitions of intensity, angle, intensity of emi emitted radiation, incident radiation, various other definitions. Subsequent to that radiative properties and the radiation heat transfer through view factors. That means, if I am just standing in front of a fire, the way I stand in front of the fire will decide how much heat flux will be incident onto me. So, that, that is why view factor becomes important. So, that is where we introduce the view factor. Subsequent to that, we introduce the real surfaces that is the uh, bla black surfaces and the real surfaces. Black surfaces are all ideal, but real surfaces are going to be diffuse and gray subsequent to that interaction between the two surfaces through this wave factor approach. And of course, we will go to enclosures and with the introduction of radiation shields and radiation effects. And the textbooks, uh, the course material what we have generated over the years essentially we have followed greatly Incropra and Devit and Changal. Personally, I like Changal very much. Why? Because what I call it as armchair reading. You do not have to really focus yourself while reading. You can just read casually, but still you can understand very clearly everything about heat transfer. That is what Professor Changal, Changal's approach is. So, my take would be Professor Changal's book, but we have followed or taken the material essentially from Incropara and David and Changal and other ones we have referred to here and there that is Professor Sukatme's book, Linhard, which you can download directly from the website which is there here and Hallman and Bejan. So, these are the books which we are uh, which we have followed while we have generated this uh, course material. And coming to course methodology, uh, I do not think we would be able to write the way uh, uh, Professor UNG, Professor Gaitonde and Professor Bandarkar have been teaching because essentially there are a lot of derivations in heat transfer. So, what we suggest is that we would be going with PowerPoint presentation, but what we can suggest is that one whoever is taking this course can take the printout of all the PPT which we can send in advance 
you can take the printout and keep it with you while we are deriving it because every step is there in this PowerPoint presentation. We are not going to assume that from this we are going to get this. No, that is not the thing. Every little step multiplication of plus, minus everything is there in our PowerPoint presentation. If you just go through our PowerPoint presentation while it is being presented with your hard copy, I think whatever notes you want to write while we are teaching, you can just write and understand it fast. So, and then uh, after the uh, course is start, complete course material would be put on the web immediately after the course and for each topic, the tutorial would be taken and tutorial essentially comprises of problems involving concepts in the class and uh, we would maybe give maybe around 5 to 10, 5 to 10 problems and whichever are tough uh, solutions would be given later on, but we would encourage you initially to try it out yourself. And yes, that is what I have written here, participants are required to solve the tutorials, subsequently these would be discussed. And what is more interesting out of all this, at the end is we would be what Professor Patek has suggested to us, that is why we have included this, that is I think which is important also is questions generation session, that is how to formulate questions which will invoke thought process for the students rather than simply plug in problems. Usually what we do is q equal to m dot cp delta t, I know q, I know m dot, I know cp, now I need to compute simply delta t. That is not the kind of the problems we need to generate, but we need to generate some thought provoking questions. That is that is what would be aimed at in this questions generation session. I think that is what I intended maybe. Professor Arun can add a little uh, at the end. Uh, the slides that have been presented by Professor Prabhu are kind of uh, what we put through for a course on heat transfer that we teach here usually. Uh, primarily we will be following what is what we have been doing at IIT, but if there is a need for focusing on some topic which you think is little bit more difficult or which needs little bit more time, uh, we would definitely uh, focus on that. Uh, you, uh, it will be more from a point of view of learning rather than what we know we want to teach, that is not the idea. So, uh, the, you can give us feedback at the end of every uh, every day that you know this probably needs a little bit of better explanation or problems need to be covered a little bit more in depth. Yeah, may, uh, yeah, some kind of uh, okay. So, uh, we, we would like it to be as interactive as possible. So, from the point of view of uh, us as instructors, you know, just feel free to let us know which topics, what things, how you can you can also guide the way the course is going to be done and most importantly we feel this tutorials which we are going to generate we have generated enough material for the over the last couple of years we are going to generate new material also this year and a uh, good amount of learning happens when you solve the problems so even though all problems may not be taken up for discussion during the session uh, we urge the participants to do it uh, in the evening and come back to us with questions. Lastly, this question generation uh, uh, session which which was uh, uh, told to us by Professor Fatak, that is something which is very, very important as college teachers that uh, most of you would uh, have to, uh, you know, have to set exams almost every time. So, that is something which we as teachers should know very well and we would like to take this opportunity to uh, you know, give give you folks an idea of you know how to generate good questions, and it will be an interactive thing. We are going to learn from you. You are going to learn from us. So, that is something which is unique, and that is we are. I think we should devote one afternoon for that thing, couple of hours at least for that thing. So, so that everybody is on the same page with regards to the questions. Uh, I think there is sufficient time between now and February when this course is going to be held. So, if you have feedback, etc., that uh, needs to be given, I think you know whom to contact at IIT, and we would take that in into account when the course is being designed. Yeah, thank you.